is the thing that gets us to consume, right? Advertisements work this way. Heaven forbid you look old. Get your wrinkle cream. <laughs> True Green is busy trying to get Paul and I to be afraid that a dandelion is going to show up in our yard. Oh. But it's bigger than that, too. We are divided in our culture among race and creed and religion and color, gender, you name it. People try to divide us instead of a healthy curiosity of, huh, I wonder what they're like. Let's get to know them. Fear is the kind of thing that divides us and keeps us away from having a relationship with others. We sometimes don't feel like we're worthy of a relationship. We won't receive it, and we won't reach out to give it to others. And fear, worst of all, I'm afraid, prevents us from seeing God's call in our life. That's for other people, right? That's for the pastor. No, it's for you. God's call in our life is real and tangible, and it does not only happen in the walls of this room. But fear can prevent us from seeing it and living it. Peter was afraid today in our gospel lesson. I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but I love Peter. <laughs> He's my favorite. Peter and Jesus have had a heck of a relationship so far. At one point, Peter was Jesus' favorite as well. Jesus told him, we're not going to call you Simon anymore. We'll call you Peter, the rock. That means the rock, Peter does. We'll call you the rock, Peter. And we will build on you. You're so great. But then Peter, being Peter, can't read the room super irritating, doesn't know when to quit. And Jesus says to him, get behind me, Satan. Oh, yes, they have been on a roller coaster. <laughs> Jesus, being God, does not turn his back on Peter because God does not turn away from us. But it's interesting to note that Peter doesn't pack his bags and go home. That's an option. He could have. He doesn't do it. He finds himself on top of this mountain with Jesus. And Matthew's gospel has already shown us that mountains are where holy things happen. They are on top of this mountain, and the heroes of the Bible show up, Moses and Elijah. And we know a little bit about Moses, right? Moses, who helps the Israelites, leads them from Egypt into freedom, from slavery into freedom. We know about Moses. Elijah, I don't know if we know as well. He's a prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, not, not money prophet, but the kind who speaks the future of God according to the word God gives him to speak. Prophets are never popular. They're usually killed. Yeah, it doesn't go well for Elijah either because he speaks out against his government, against the corruption, against the greed, against the immorality. His king and queen try to kill him, King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. I bet you've heard that name, right? <laughs> that was a real person. And they spend their time in power chasing Elijah down. Suddenly on this mountain top are Jesus and Moses and Elijah. And Peter, wow, he is floored, right? It's amazing. Let's stay here. Let's stay here. Let's build these booths and stay here, these dwellings for this amazing thing. And you know what? We're missing we're missing from the others, so they will come and find us. They will come to us. And then they'll know this stuff too. They'll know about Jesus and Moses and Elijah. They'll come to find us, and eventually they'll go tell other people, this is going to turn into a holy Disneyland. Can't you see it? It's going to be great. We'll have to sell concessions. It's going to be awesome. But God comes. 
God speaks. This seems to always happen when people get comfortable, when they decide to stay put, maybe even a little stagnant. It has happened to me. <laughs> God speaks. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And it's interesting to me that the appearance of Moses and Elijah doesn't freak Peter out, but God speaking does, <laughs> right? The long dead, that's normal, but God's voice is abnormal. Okay, Peter. <laughs> and what does Jesus say? Don't be afraid. Don't do that. Because fear gets in the way of everything. Fear gets in the way of everything. Jesus is not going to stay where you put him. Jesus is not staying on the mountaintop. Jesus is not staying in this room. Jesus is not going to stay put. That is not in his nature. We worship a Savior who consistently goes to the lost, the least, and the lonely, and he loves them, and we know it's true because he has come to us that way. We have felt that, have we not? In our times of need, we know it's true. Jesus is going to leave that mountaintop and return to the world and continue on in his ministry and mission. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't do that. Don't let your fear stand in the way of everything, in the way of relationship with your Savior, in the way of connection with others. Don't do that. You know, Peter gets off that mountain. He follows Jesus every step of the way. That's how he does it. Peter gets off the mountain and he follows Jesus every step of the way. I bet it wasn't easy. Might have slipped and slid. Who knows? But he gets off that mountain. And that is our call. Our call is to continue in the footsteps of Jesus, not as Jesus. We are not Jesus. Our call is to leave here and live in our everyday lives like we know Jesus is real. To share that compassion and love and mercy that we have first received. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to share that it is different than what the world gives. It makes you stand out. It is so essential. It helps make the whole world well. Don't be afraid. Amen.